Now let's come to the introduction of definite integrals. Before we come to the in introduction of definite integrals and the difference between integration and definite integration, let's come with the basic introduction of calculus. Now we know that calculus is generally originated because of two major issues, geometrical issues, as originated because of two geometrical issues. So basically the integrals or the differentiation or integration has originated from two major complex issues which the mathematicians were striving to resolve. One was finding the equation of tangent of a curve, that is if I have the curve finding the equation of tangent for the curve and the other is finding the area between the curves. So this is how the calculus has originated where the curve is given by y equals f of x and here they are given by y equals f of x. and b. So differentiation helps in finding the equation of tangent because the slope of the tangent is assumed as f dash x. This is how differentiation helps in finding the equation of tangent and hence the mathematicians could resolve finding the equation of tangent easily finding the derivative of the function f of x and hence differentiation has its significance in finding the equation of tangent to any curve y equals f of x. Similarly, the next geometrical concept which was unresolved by the mathematicians was finding the area of the curves. If I find, if I have the curves like perfect curves like triangle or a rectangle or any other normal curve, we, we can easily find area of triangle or area of rectangle or area of parallelogram etc. But what if the curve is irregularly shaped? How do I find area of this curve? How do I find area of this curve is the biggest question when we challenge in the field of mathematics. Finding the area of this irregular shape is not possible through any standard formula, but we use integration to solve these kind of problems where we find areas of irregular shapes and let's see how definite integration has originated from this unresolved issue of finding the areas under the curves or areas of irregular shapes etc. Definite integrals connected with geometry. Now as we have seen in the introduction of definite integrals that calculus has two unresolved issues one being finding equation of tangent line and the next being finding the area under the curve. So let's connect with the curve. X axis, Y axis, origin. Now I have two lines x equals a and x equals b which are parallel to y axis and I want to find the area under the curve which is this. How do I find area under the curve which is irregularly shaped? This can be done using integration and this kind of integration is called definite integration. The area under this curve is found using as given by this shader region is given by integral now because this area is bounded between x equal to a and x equal to b, we always say that 
these two are the boundaries where this is the lower boundary and this is the upper boundaries. So this is bounded between x equal to a and x equal to b. So we have integral x equals a to b of f of x dx. So area under the curve is given by this and which is called definite integral. because this integration gives a definite value. Therefore, definite integral does not have constant of integration c because it is definite with, without any unknown constant c. This is how the definite integral is originated from finding the area under the curve. So definite integral is integral a to b f of x dx where a is called lower limit and b is called upper limit. Now let's see the notation for definite integral which is denoted by integral a to b f of x dx is and formula which is given by f of minus f of a that is by substituting x equal to a in the integral first and this is how we obtain the formula here a is called lower limit and b is called upper limit and fx is integration of f of x over dx is how we understand each of them. So definite integral of a to b f of x dx is f of b minus f of a which is definite because it doesn't have an integration constant. So it's very important to note that definite integral does not have C, the constant of integration, and hence is definite. This is how we understand the definite integral as compared with integral. Integral has integration constant. Definite integral does not have integration constant. Partition. What is partition in integration concept? Now when it comes to say I have two real numbers a and b such that a is less than b. Then if I just represent them on the number line, I see that here is a and here is b. Then the partition denoted by P is said to be x1, x2, xi minus 1, xi, xi plus 1 this. This is said to be partition of the closed interval AB denoted by this number line including a and b with filled in circle is said to be the partition partition of a b if i have the condition that my a which is assumed as x naught the first term and my b which is assumed 
as the last term is such that a equals x naught is less than x1 is less than x2 is less than x3 xi minus 1 xi xi plus 1 equals b that is if i take on the number line my x naught then comes x1 then comes x2 x3 xi minus 1 xi xi plus 1 and so on and so forth xn minus 1 x2 n minus 1 and xn is how taken in that order we call this p as partition of a b is how we define therefore partition of the closed interval a b is x naught x1 x2 so on and so forth till xn where a and b are real numbers on the whole of the number line now next let's define the norm of the partition that is let p equals x naught x1 x2 x minus 1 xn be the partition of a b where a and b are real numbers so if this is the partition then norm of the partition p is denoted by norm p and it is defined as maximum of each of this minus this and this minus this and this minus this this minus this and this minus this that is when I take this x1 minus x0 x2 minus x1 x3 minus x2 and xn minus xn minus 1 so each of this with max of is called norm of the partition p denoted with norm p and it is maximum of each of the lengths the norm of the partition p if i have the closed interval a b denoted on the number line as a and b with this being denoted by x0 and this is x1 x2 so on and so forth till x n minus 1 and xn then the sub interval of this taken as say x i minus 1 x i is called the sub interval this is called sub interval of the old interval a b and length of this sub interval is denoted by delta x i which is given by the formula length of sub interval x i minus 1 x i is denoted by delta x i and this is x i minus x i minus 1 is how the length of sub interval denoted by this equals this now for the interval a b we have various types of per partitions which are denoted with p so the set of all partitions is denoted by set of all partitions of a b is denoted by p of a b 
and it is defined as P such that P is a partition of AB. So this is how we define the partition set or set of all partitions. Set of all partitions of the closed interval AB denoted by P of AB as P such that P is a partition of AB. Set of all partitions and its notation.